Have you ever tried to grow mushrooms but didn't get good results? Maybe your harvest was small or non existent. Or do you have a grow kit and will try this for the first time? Keep watching and discover the six most common reasons why your mushrooms are not growing. By the way, if you find this info useful, please consider hitting the like button. And for more info about mushrooms, hit subscribe. Let's get into it. 1. Not enough moisture. One of the most important environmental factors for successfully growing any kind of mushroom is moisture. Mushrooms are mostly water, so if you don't maintain the right humidity level, then their mycelium, or roots, will dry up and won't survive long enough for the mushrooms to grow. So before adding your mushroom spawn, or, seeds, to the substrate, or, soil, give your substrate a thorough soak and squeeze out the extra water. The substrate should retain enough moisture if your mushrooms are growing in an enclosed space like a large plastic tub, also known as a monotub. Then, during the fruiting period of your mushrooms, remember to spritz your container or bag multiple times a day, or purchase a humidifier along with a hygrometer to keep a consistent humidity level. If you don't maintain the right humidity level, then your mushroom caps will become dry and brittle and may even crack or break. Remember that if you live in a drier climate, you might need to water more often than the specified instructions if you're growing mushrooms outdoors. Water retention can improve if you select a naturally shaded area for your mushrooms or if you install shade nettings. Reason number two, too much moisture. Too much humidity is detrimental to your mushrooms. And if there is standing water where your mushrooms are growing, you may end up with mold and other contaminations. So don't overwater your mycelium, and make sure you drain your substrate thoroughly. Another trick is to spritz your substrate with water instead of soaking it, the opposite of what you would do if it's lacking moisture. This would ensure that no excess water is retained. Depending on your local conditions and the kind of mushrooms you're trying to grow, the relative humidity in your growing environment should range from 70 to 90 percent. A hygrometer is a tool that measures the humidity levels in the air, and is very helpful when growing mushrooms. We have a few of our favorite hygrometers down in the description below. Reason number three, contamination. Contamination is one of the most frequent reasons that your mushrooms don't grow, and it can cause problems at any stage of your mushrooms' development. It happens most frequently because growers have not sterilized and cleaned. You will get better results if you sterilize all surfaces, tools, and containers in your growing area. Pollutants like bacteria and mold often thrive since they love environments that are warm and damp. The contaminants will fight your fungus for nutrients, which can slow or even halt its growth and development. Before you mix your spawn with the substrate, make sure the substrate is thoroughly sterilized. No exceptions. If you're using a pressure cooker to sterilize your substrate, remember to check the pressure often. And if you're using liquid cultures, always flame treat the syringe needle before every penetration. You should also do the same with the scalpel if you're growing your own spawn when using agar and petri dishes. Also, remember that the cleanliness and hygiene of the setting where you work are equally important. Wear gloves and a face mask when available and sterilize all equipment with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Contaminated spores may be carried into rooms with airflow. So try to keep drafts to a minimum by using still air boxes or tents when working. Remember to also keep your furry pets away. The general rule of thumb is to cause as little disturbance to the growing environment as much as possible. And if you're a serious mycologist, you may also want to consider a laminar flow hood in your workspace. It is also important to learn how various contaminants appear so that you can easily recognize them when they start to impact your growing operation. Healthy mycelium is white. If you see any pink, green, orange, black, or brown spots, 
then contamination may be present. To prevent further spread, jars or bags that are contaminated should be removed from your grow area right away. Reason number four impatience. New mushroom growers are always eager to see the fruiting result, and they may make drastic changes to their projects to get their mushrooms to grow faster. You may run into contamination if your preparations are incomplete, or when you don't follow a procedure properly. When you rush each step, you increase your failure rate. So before inoculating your substrate, remember to always let it cool fully. And when you begin the pinning and fruiting stage, make sure your mycelium has thoroughly colonized the substrate. Shortcuts never bring about a good outcome. Understanding the life cycle and fruiting probability of the specific mushroom you're growing is also helpful. Some mushrooms, like morels for example, may not fruit for several years. Patience is a virtue and the key to a successful grower. The idea is to mimic nature and the natural environment of the mushroom you are growing as much as possible. Invest in the correct equipment at the beginning of your growing journey to maximize your chances of success. If you're a new grower, you may find the details to be long, complex, and even painstaking. But even seasoned and experienced growers may take multiple tries before getting a successful flush. It's important to start the process knowing that the results are a bit like baking bread, partially out of your control. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't work the first time. Learn, and keep going. Reason number five, thermogenesis. When mycelium breaks down organic matter, just like compost piles, your substrate will begin to produce heat on its own. And it's entirely possible that the substrate temperature rises above the ambient air temperature, and when that happens, the heat may be hot enough to fry your mycelium and promotes the growth of microbes. That is why good air circulation in the room or your mushroom's ambient environment will help prevent the substrate from overheating. Remember to constantly monitor the ambient temperature and keep it a few degrees lower than the suggested maximum temperature for your specific mushroom to allow a buffer for thermogenesis to happen. How compact your substrate is, and its depth, will also affect the temperature and ventilation. If you tightly pack them into the sides of the beds or trays, it will create a more consistent temperature across your substrate. Reason number six, wrong environment. Because mushrooms grow everywhere in the world, each strain of mushroom has its own preferred habitat. Please do your research on the strain of mushrooms you're trying to grow, especially the natural environmental factors that the mushroom prefers. For example, it will be very difficult for you to grow a warm climate mushroom in cold weather. And if the mushroom prefers wood, using straw instead will quickly lead to failure. The most important factors you should consider are air and substrate temperatures, humidity, light conditions, fresh air exchange, and ventilation. The secret to mastering the art of mushroom growing is to grow them under the right conditions for the strain. Listen and learn from Mother Nature. Even if it's not required, a little observation and information can go a long way. If you found these tips helpful, please hit the like button. It'll really help us out with the YouTube algorithm. And for more tips on how to successfully grow mushrooms, please consider subscribing and going to mushroomsite.com.